In this video, we will create a pivot table and understand what the different components of a pivot table are. So let me open the sales worksheet. And this is going to be our source for the pivot table because we want to summarize all of these rows of data into simple summary so that we understand how our sales are performing. So I can click on any cell here in this data set and then I'm going to go and say insert pivot table. I'll just click on it. And now Excel asks me, it wants to create a pivot table and it's asking me whether this is the table which is going to be the data that we would analyze using a pivot table. And you can see the dancing ants around the data that we have. And it also shows here A1 to O569. That's the data set that it will be using as a source. And it also asks us where we want this pivot table report to be placed. And you can either place it in a brand new worksheet or you can choose an existing worksheet and place it there. Right now, I'm going to just choose new worksheet. And now what happens is Excel has created a new sheet worksheet called sheet one. And I'm going to click here and drag it to the end so that we have it at the end. And now this is what the pivot table report looks like. First, this is the pivot table report and this is now empty so that you don't see anything here. On the right, you have the pivot table field list. And these are the fields that we have available for us to use in our pivot table report. You also see that there are two new ribbons that are displayed once we have a pivot table selected. So in order to understand better what these different areas are, I'm just going to start creating a pivot table so that it, it's easier to understand. So there are four regions or four areas here. I'm going to first drag, click sales and then drag into the values area. And immediately you see that we have some numbers here and specifically here we have one number which says the sum of sales. And you see here that it says sum of sales. So when we drag the sales in the values area, Excel automatically is summing it up because it, note, it knows that it's numbers and the sales column has numbers. So it's actually added them up. And this number represents the sum of all the values that we have in our sales column. I'm going to go back to our pivot table. So that is what this represents. And the title says sum of sales. Now, if I want to know the sales by each book, I can drag the book name from here in the row labels area. And now we see book name and sales for each of the books. And then there is a grand total. So this is what the row labels will do. They will actually be rows and Excel automatically finds the unique values in the book name field in our source data here and then it actually will list them and then the sales will be calculated for each of the books and a grand total has been also created now if i move i can also move between the different areas so if i move my book name to the column labels area you see that now each book is in a different column and the sales values are sum of sales are shown here and then the grand total. So for us, the row labels make more sense. And so I will move them back here. And now the book name and the sum of sales. Now, if I want to actually know, for example, um, the different order locations, so the store versus website, how the sales are distributed for each book, I'm going to drag the order location in the column labels area. And now store and website are two separate columns here and we also have a total. So this total here represents the total sales for the book A Guide to Health, which would be the sum of the website sales and the store sales. And website contributed this much and store contributed this much and the total is this. Similarly, for each book, we can know the total and also the breakdown between store and website. And if you look at it from a 
column perspective here, you see that the total sales from store is this and total sales from website is this. And then you can see how each book contributed to that. So this is now a matrix where we can have the book name and the order location and all the possible combinations there. Now, if we want to know this information only for ebook book type, and now I will drag the book type into the report filter. And now it'll be added here at the top of our pivot table. And this is the set of filters. And this gives us a drop down menu where we can select items. And again, Excel has identified unique values in the book type column. And it's now telling us there are three unique values. And so we can choose one. If I want ebook, I can choose this. And now the data here in this table will be only for the ebook book type and i can choose hardcover and now it will be only for hardcover i can also choose ebook and hardcover and now this table will represent the sum of both book types i'm going to leave it at ebook so now we have the filter which is the report filter and we have column labels order location and we have the row labels book name and we are summarizing the sales, the sum of sales information. So now this is a nice meaningful little pivot table that we have created using the information we have in our source data. And now this is one view of the data and this helps us answer the questions about what books are selling and how much and where are they selling in store or website and how much. And we can also filter by each book type very easily. So this pivot table report now is also very interactive. The user can choose and then they will see the data that reflects their selection. And finally, these draw arrows here, when you click on them, you can actually now sort by the row labels. If I want to sort A to Z, and now these labels, the book labels are actually now sorted and I can change the sort order. I can also filter if I want to show only certain books, I can just uncheck the other ones and I will show only certain books. Similarly, the column labels can also be sorted, can also be filtered. If I want to see only the website, I can uncheck the store value here and now if I say okay now I will see only the website and the total now will only be the sum of website and the stored data is now completely excluded and if I want to include it back I will do this and now we have everything here.